Buffalo was the second largest railroad uh, hub in the country, actually in North America, and uh, the Central Terminal played a significant part in that uh, transportation era. The, the heyday of the Central Terminal was World War II. Uh, throughout the 50s and 60s, there was a, a steady decline uh, of, of, of trains with uh, airplanes uh, and, and new technology, uh, cars, roads got better. So up until uh, 1979, when the last passenger trains uh, left the building, um, there was a, a, a few good owners, a, a few not so good owners as far as stewardship to the building. And uh, basically this building was in pristine condition up until 1986. Uh, then uh, the city of Buffalo took over uh, the custody of the building and um, it was uh, for $100,000 it was let go to salvage and therefore uh, the damage you see here is not vandalism, it was actually a salvage operation. If you go online you can see that some of the artifacts actually are, are quite around the world. Some are in China, some are across the country, uh, but the, the lights are predominant. We were lucky enough uh, you see the see the clock in the in the background uh, over my shoulder. That came back to uh, Central Terminal by way of a, a, a grant from uh, M&T Bank for twenty five thousand dollars. That was one of the significant items brought back to the building. But a lot of the other uh, artifacts, uh, uh, the lights and and some of the brass and rail work, uh, was taken out of the building either for scrap or for salvage. I've been doing tours here for a number of years, and and one of the uh, one of the people in the gallery, uh, a lady said, I think I know where the clock is for Central Terminal. Now we get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, inquiries about, hey, do you know where this is? Or we may know where that is, that type of thing. We get a discussion going. Nine times out of 10, it's, it's, it's not Central Terminal, uh, a Central Terminal artifact. But uh, the lady was uh, moving back uh, to Buffalo from Chicago and she remembers seeing the clock in an antique warehouse. So I said, you know, if you're going back, and she was going back to close on her home, uh, when she was selling her home, I said, take a picture of the clock and we can identify it better. And it turned out it was the clock. Initially, the owner who owned it wanted $50,000 for the clock. And uh, M&T found out about it, their charitable foundation found out about it, and it was willing to help us out. And we were quite surprised when uh, M&T wrote a check for $25,000 to the owner and presented the Central Terminal Restoration with the clock. So that, that was an important find. Um, as recently of the, as this year, um, uh, another family came forward and, and they returned uh, light sconces uh, for, that were once in the atrium. And uh, essentially all we had to do was uh, plug them in and they, they worked fine. From time to time, uh, people you know are, are, are looking in their attics and. Uh, when the building was left open by the city after the salvaging operations, a lot of stuff dif disappeared to the point of it's in a lot of personal hands. So it makes it more difficult to locate, but we were able to get uh, some of the lights. The biggest thing we did is that we had uh, initially, uh, the building, like I said, was pristine in 1986, but from 86 to 97, the CTRC uh, took ownership in 97. In those years where the building was salvaged, uh, there was a lot of neglect, but also by salvaging operations, uh, there was issues with the roof, the windows, the weather was getting into the building. So when we purchased the building in 97, we had a five-point initiative to, number one, get good title to the building, which meant uh, uh, it, it, it went through a couple owners' hands, if you will, so we had to get good title to the building. Number two, secure the building. Number three, get the weather out of the building. Where we're sitting right now, uh, 13 years ago, there was three feet of snow in a concourse. The weather was, was coming right into the building, so that was significant. Uh, number four, open up the building to events, and uh, we've had uh, very good success with that. People are coming back to the building. And what's significant, when we first opened up the building, um, a lot of older folks came by to see what was left of the old uh, train station, but now during events, uh, our demographics are 25 to 35 year old people, and they're enjoying a building. It's, it's a whole nother life for the building, but realistically not it's not going to save the building, it's keeping the building standing and away from the wrecking ball. Number five, our fifth initiative was uh, development, or ready the, ready the entire complex for development, and we're very close to that right now. So uh, we're at the development stage with uh, creations of the master plan and things like that. 
Um, one of the things that we had to do as a group, we sat down as a board and got also input from all our volunteers. And the central terminal is significant to the, the people in the surrounding neighborhood um, and for the most part, most of Western New York. We needed to get the central terminal out of the east side of Buffalo. And what I mean by that is let other people know about it. And uh, by letting other people know about it, uh, we're getting development inquiries uh, as far as uh, away as, uh, you know, uh, the West Coast, the United States, and even Canadian interest. And uh, the master plan outlines a lot of possibilities that could be done with this building. Uh, although it is an old train station, trains will play a, a factor, quite frankly, a small factor in development. But it, it's a, at this stage of the game, this project is a commercial real estate development project. One of the things that we talked about was, uh, you know, uh, we opened up the building for events, and there's a lot of uh, people. Uh, we also have a, a, a website, and a lot of people show interest in the building, want to know a little bit about the history or how can they help. The best thing to do is, uh, via our website or word of mouth, whatever it takes, is tell the Central Terminal story. Uh, go on Facebook. Uh, uh, get on our website and uh, come enjoy the, uh, the terminal during the events, but let other people know about it. And by letting other people know about it, we've also been uh, able to, out, to outreach into, into corporate America where, uh, I don't know if you can see it from where I'm sitting, but farther down there's a, a buffalo that was donated back. Uh, uh, George and Mackworth, they, they're recreating uh, some of the lights and the railings. Uh, Ace Flag donated the, uh, the flagpole uh, through some uh, other fundraising. Uh, that's the things that we need. We need people to uh, step forward by way of, hey, e if you can donate monetarily, that's great, but also if you can donate your time, that's great as well. Local 71 has a group of volunteers that get together at the Union Hall and look for little projects to do. A lot of it can be community service work, uh, just fun projects, whatever. And uh, our business manager, John Helak, says, uh, hey, you got anything for those guys to do? And we thought because this is basically what they do, work with metal, it would be a good idea for them to see what they could do. And uh, we gave them the opportunity by taking some dimensions off of some drawings we had, sizing it up to what was up here. And we ended up with just a picture and dimensions. And uh, this is actually the picture right here that we went off of. We ended up giving them this, and this is what they end up doing for us. A wonderful job. They're actually in the process of making six more for us right now. Predominant events that we have is Dingus Day, which essentially is Polish Mardi Gras. Uh, and the concourse that we're sitting in right now will have up to 3,000 to 3,500 people here at one time. When you come in here during one of the larger events, it, the, the terminal looks like it, it's, it's operating as it did uh, in the 40s during the World, World War II uh, time frame. Uh, the next one that we're having is, is going to be uh, DecoFest. Uh, it's another, it's kind of like a big band swing type type event and uh, it reaches out to the older folks that like the Glenn Miller stuff and then the younger folks that are into the, the modern day swing. Uh, we also have a, a train show uh, that's, uh, that's, we've done very well with that over the years and makes sense in a train station. We have Oktoberfest, uh, that's a German Heritage Festival, that's in late September. And uh, what's really come along lately are the, the tours of the building. Our average tour years ago was 12 to 15 people. Now an average tour on a weekend could be anywhere upwards of 100 to 150 people at a time. So that's doing very well for us. Well, uh, another event that uh, it, it's, we have from time to time, we haven't uh, scheduled a, a, a time slot for it, but is we do uh, candlelight tours and, and uh, paranormal ghost hunts. The best thing I can tell you about that is uh, see for yourself. It's a different experience for, for different people. Some people say they heard things, see things. Um, all I can tell you is uh, take a look at our website, find out what our next uh, candlelight tours and ghost hunts are, and find out for yourself. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, with the master plan, and also we have done a historic structures report, which is significant for, for grants and things like that, and what that means is to let us know how much money and where the need is within the building complex the need to prioritize the needs of uh, restoration. We're looking probably at least a, a 55 to $60 million, uh, I don't want to say uh, it's, it's a renovation project, it's not totally restoration. And then beyond that, now that gives you a building that you can use, 
then you're probably looking at at another fifty million dollars worth of improvements. In other words, if you want to do lofts or if you want to do light industrial and things like that, we're dealing with five hundred and twenty-three thousand square feet. So uh, with that brings a lot of opportunities, but it's a pretty massive project.